Hi. I've spent all morning trying to figure out where to film this video because I've not filmed a sit down talking to the camera video since I moved into this new flat. I love this room. It's got a massive window and the natural light is lovely. And it's the room that I'm like most proud of. I feel like it's the room that we're the most there with. We've still got things we want to do to it and add to it, but it's definitely the best room in the flat. The bedroom is like a bit of a blank canvas and it's not got a lot of natural light. It might be better for filming these types of videos but there's just like not a lot of character, but then it's more consistent and then the bedroom is carpeted so the audio might be better. But I've spent too much time worrying about it this morning and I just need to film this video. So I've been living in London for two years and two months now and I'm someone who takes their Google Maps saves very seriously. I see a TikTok of a recommendation of somewhere to go, whether that's in the city or on holiday or anywhere else in the world, it's going in my Google Maps saves. I'm also usually the person who makes all of the reservations and and orchestrates all the plans, partly because I'm a control freak, but also because I'm so passionate about food and vintage shopping and just fun times and vibes. So that's why I wanted to make this video. I love Moya Mawini's channel and her Paris favorites or Paris recommendations. I found them really helpful when I was going to Paris. And I've also had quite a few DMs on Instagram recently asking me for my recommendations on vintage shopping in London and like what to do if they're visiting London for the weekend. So this video is in response to that. That. This list is not comprehensive and I could honestly go on for hours and there are still so many things I'm yet to do, places I'm yet to discover and that's almost like the hardest thing because even making this list I was like oh I should really go back there but then I also should venture out and try new things and try new places. Also I'm very aware that some people might watch this and be like yawn these are all so obvious but I think you almost forget that sometimes we create this little like echo chamber where what's like normal and usual and like routine or regular for us isn't for everyone. And some people watching this might be visiting London for the weekend or planning to or hoping on visiting London, or they're just looking for some more inspo and they just want some recs. So these are my tried and tested favorites and then a few places on my wish list. In this video, I'm gonna cover where I would recommend going for shopping secondhand and vintage for like super cheap and then more like mid range pricing and then brunch, lunch, dinner, date night spots, where to go for drinks, where to go out and where to go for a lovely Sunday roast. Also, you will notice a majority of my recommendations are East London. I am an East London girly. My sister used to live in West London and she moved there like 10 years ago when she came for uni and I always used to come and visit her and I used to be like I don't like love London I don't feel very connected to it um, and I can't see myself living here and then my boyfriend moved to Stoke Newington and I used to come down and visit him and I was like oh okay like I get it now I really feel like I can see myself here and I definitely feel that way now that I'm here I was like a little bit hesitant before I moved I'm not gonna lie because I always used to be so anti but East London has my heart I am I am one of those girls. So we're gonna start with cheap thrifting. I'm not a big charity shopper in the UK, I'm not gonna lie. If I happen to be going past one and I have the time, I will always, always go in. But I don't really like seek them out that much. I think because as a country, we consume so much fast fashion. I think you just find that a lot of the charity shops are filled with fast fashion and I don't like it. I also find like the curated ones just like, I don't know, they're not curated to my kind of taste or style. So I just rarely find anything that I like or want in UK charity shops. That being said, I was in Pimlico the other day and I was in the Fara and there are a few charity shops in that area. And the selection looked quite good, I'm not gonna lie. I did end up buying a dress and I wish I had more time to like dig around there, but I had heard before that the charity shops in Pimlico are really good. And there is also Pimlico car boot, which is on every Sunday, which I've heard really good things about as well. So that's on like my list. I really want to go, but I am a big Peckham car boot fan. I love it. I think there are always so many sellers. It's such a big site. So there's such a big variety of what's on offer. And I just think in general, it's better. It's better as a seller because I think if you have slightly more expensive things, you can go there and sell them for slightly more what it's worth. Whereas I've sold at Princess May car boot in Dalston before and everyone's lowballing you, but it also means that you can find a different 
different variety of stuff at the car boot so if you are willing to spend like 30 or 40 quid on something designer then that's there too or even more but then there's also the stuff for one pound two pound 50p i love it i went yesterday i came back with so many little bits and bobs for the house and then like three tops don't be afraid to haggle always just make a day of it go with your friends and don't put too much pressure on yourself or like seek out anything just go with people who you trust their opinion and their feedback because sometimes it's really hard to tell if you're just like caught up in the moment and want to get something and then you get home and you're like mm, what the fuck is this and if you're too scared to haggle you can go with friends who can haggle for you and then i mentioned princess may car boot in dalston i've been a few times now and come out empty-handed whereas i've never had that with peck and car boot i don't know what it is i just don't think it's as good so for more mid-range vintage shopping i would say to check out the instagram pages of vintage sellers in london if you're not sure where to find them you can check out who i follow on instagram because i follow so many vintage sellers but also a good place to look would be on second life markets instagram they host really large scale pop-ups with lots of different sellers and they'll tag the other sellers in the post or in the description of the post but honestly since I moved to London it seems like there's been a pop-up on every weekend and some of my favorite pieces in my wardrobe I bought at vintage pop-ups I love a pop-up I think it's a really good way to shop vintage at like a relatively reasonable price point mostly it's like shopping depop in real life and knowing that the piece fits you and suits you and you love it but more recently it seems like there's been a growth in popularity of vintage sellers offering private studio or showroom appointments this is a really nice way to shop vintage as well because you have the space usually to yourself it's a very like calm and relaxing atmosphere if you're someone who gets really overstimulated in like really busy and hectic shopping environments my friend mariana who owns caracroa offers them and i never leave her studio empty-handed outsource vintage also do them sharin uses her space also as like a community space so she hosts events and like invites other vintage sellers to her studio space to sell alongside her as well. So definitely check out her Instagram page. And then there's one that I haven't been to yet. So I actually don't know firsthand how it is, but there's a Adam meme. I don't know how you say it. I'm so sorry. Um, I know that she offers studio or showroom appointments as well. Portobello Market in West London is a bit of a tourist trap and it can get super, super busy, but it's still worth it. It's definitely worth getting up early and getting out there as soon as you can and try and beat the crowd crowds or heading there on a Friday because it's slightly less busy because it's not the weekend yet but that also means that all the sellers aren't there so take from that what you will. My friend Caitlin at Nude Lagoon usually has a stall at Portobello but because of the nature of the market and how it works it's not always in the same place so I can't tell you exactly where it's going to be but if you want to try and hunt her down then drop her a DM on Instagram. The same goes for Brick Lane it's in East London and it also can be a really busy tourist trap but there are some really good spots if you know where to go and when to go. There is a vintage market, which is below ground that has two entrances and there's like the newer bit. And I think I just in general prefer the newer bit because the older bit feels a bit more like a dungeony Aladdin's cave and sure you can find good stuff there. But in the newer bit, you've got Proxy and you've got Vivian's Vintage, both of which have an amazing offering. Um, Vivian's Vintage is slightly cheaper, cheaper than Proxy, but Proxy also has really good stock too. And then literally on Brick Lane or one of the surrounding roads, you've got Serotonin, Attergirl and Shop Yachts. Shop Yachts is slightly more like dark, grungy archival vibe serotonin has lots of like cavalli moschino and like dng that's their kind of vibe and then attergirl is just like kind of similar vibes to serotonin i guess just like curated vintage designer if you are blessed enough to have a lot of money in the bank west archive do showroom appointments the showroom itself is stunning all of the stock is incredible it's well out of my budget but it's still even just nice to just go and look at the stock and then from what i've seen on instagram either from the past trash page itself or from Bo and Eve the past trash owners it looks like past trash are going to be opening up a new vintage store soon which would honestly be amazing because they had a store in Covent Garden for quite a long time and then it shut a few months back and it was just like a great go-to for if you wanted to go shopping in central vintage shopping and like just know you're going to find some good stuff it's always really reasonably priced and it's always curated so nicely um and past trash are just like the OG Depop girls. So moving on to breakfast and brunch, if you're looking to grab like a pastry and a coffee and go for a nice little stroll, I would say either go to Dusty Knuckle because their croissants and their cookies, their cookies are the best things I've ever had in my entire life, firstly, um, but their croissants are also really good and they offer a really nice like selection of baked goods. But they also do like 
breakfast sandwiches and stuff so if you want to sit in or in the outside area and have like a proper sit down brunch or breakfast they do that too all know it is a really nice little spot and then you can walk along the canal i love walking along regent's canal jolene and popham's also delicious pastries i haven't yet been to toad bakery in peckham but that is on my list and then so is fortitude bakehouse and then if you're looking to like go for brunch and sit down with the girls catch up spill the tea i would recommend going to the good egg on church street friends of ours which is in hoxton i love ozone they've got an ozone in shoreditch and london fields i always get the like bubble and squeak mm, poached eggs with the kimchi bloody mary i think that's what i've had both times that i've been love it and then some places that i haven't yet been but would like to go is snack bar it's like a little cafe in east e5 bakehouse apparently they do a good little brunch selection and then de beauvoir deli cafe casual bites so i guess it's kind of like if you want to get something for lunch but don't want like sit and have like a proper lunch um sonora taqueria in stoke newington do the most incredible tacos. They also offer like horchata, horchata cold brew. They've got agua fresca. I hate to be this person, but I um, was in Mexico for two months and it is the most like authentic tacos that I've had in London yet and the most delicious ones. So like flavorsome and just mm, unreal. I need to go back. They usually have a queue and they're also only open from like 12 till three. So you can't go for dinner. There is some indoor seating, um, but I would recommend just getting them and maybe walking up to and around like Cliss Old Park. And then there's Papo's Bagels, delicious. Get me an everything bagel with the like deli filling, you know, like cold meats and like a little bit of sliced rocket and oil and vinegar, yummy. I've also had the Papo's Bagels tuna salad bagel, but I preferred the Paulie's Bagels tuna salad bagel because you can get it spicy and I love a little spicy tuna salad. Paulie's Bagels, they've got one on Well Street and in Nettle Market. If you're hungover, the bacon, egg and cheese is mwah, delish. Pockets used to be in Nettle Market now they've got like a brick and mortar around the corner from London Fields. The most incredible falafel pizza pocket that you will ever have in your life. And unlike any that you've ever had in your life, it's incredible, complete game changer, delicious. The queue is well worth it. I always just think when you see a queue, the queue is going to move what's an extra couple of minutes. Like it's not that deep. I feel like there's like a little bit of a debate between what's better, Dom Subs and Rogue Sarnies. Rogue Sarnies is better bread in my opinion. I do really like Dom Subs, but Rogue Sarnies is also delicious. Um, but if you want like a good sandwich and then go and sit in like Haggerston Park, just lovely really, just lush. You can pre-order and I would recommend pre-ordering because the queues also get pretty wild. It's really funny when you go past Dom Subs, like if you're cycling past or on a bus or whatever, you can just see like a queue of like East London boys and it's just, it's really funny. <laughs> And then lastly is Tokonoko. It's canal side and it has Japanese snacks and meals and teas. I went and I got the little like set lunch thing and it was just delicious. And it was like nothing I'd ever had before. And it feels really light and really like nourishing. For lunch slash dinner, I've got Cafe Cecilia. I put it up there with one of my favorite meals I've ever had in London. I would just say it's maybe lacking a little bit in decor because it's like very simple, very basic, but it is canal side, so that's nice. It's owned by Max Rocha, who is Simone Rocha's brother crazy imagine being their parents really really delicious food i think quite hard to get a reservation so book far in advance but i mean what's new in london jolene on newington green is also incredible for like small plates and natural wines there are a few jolines that you can go to and get pastries and coffee but i'm pretty sure the newington green one is the only one where you can go and have like a sit down lunch or dinner and the food is incredible like so 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 good forza wine in peckham so south of the river my friend eleanor does it every year for her birthday and and if you go and the weather is nice and the weather's on your side, you're gonna have the best evening. Book to go around sunset because you can literally see the sunset over the city. It's a rooftop wine bar, but it, they also have food um, and it's kind of like a sharing small plates vibe again. Top Cuvée also do amazing seasonal small plates and natural wines. The service is amazing. The vibe's really good and just the food is incredible. And lastly, Rita's in Soho. I love it. It's like fancy American diner style food. So you go and you get the like crispy chicken Caesar salad and the chips and the Diet Coke, um, but they also do like an amazing selection of food and drinks. And I love it. Date night spots. If you're looking for somewhere like with a bit of a sexy vibe to go, I would say Moo in Dalston is really good. It's Japanese food. It's a little bit more on the pricey side, but there's live music and like right in the middle of the room where these two guys just like jamming when we were there. <laughs> Thank you.
which is really fun and just like fun to sit back and watch and just like enjoy. Orange has a rotating like roster of chefs. So when you go, if you go a few months later, it won't be the same menu. Another spot for like small plates and natural wines, but always delicious. And then 392 Kingsland Road. It's a bar with like a few small food offerings. I saw they had tiramisu on the menu, so I really want to go back and try their tiramisu. On Wednesdays, they have live music, but also just like on the weekend, it's a nice spot to go for a little cocktail before you go out for a meal with your partner or partner to be or partner for the night. Little Duck Picklery. Solly and I went there really spontaneously. My sister had recommended it to us. It's in Dalston and it has, the brother restaurant is Duck Soup in Soho that I went to with Susie and her boyfriend James. The food is amazing. Seasonal, small plates, natural wines, but I love it. Even nicer at the Little Duck because you can sit on this like sort of main big high up table and watch them make your food for you. Um, whereas um, Duck Soup is more of a classic like go and sit at your table and your food gets brought to you. Pasta. I have like a whole section dedicated to pasta because I've been to so many good pasta spots in London. There is Ida which is like a really sweet little Italian restaurant and the pasta and the tiramisu was delicious. We went for Gloria's birthday in January and it was Delish. Then there's Popham's in Hackney. It's a great spot to go and get a pastry and a coffee from in the morning, but then for lunch and dinner, you can go and get pasta and their menu is delicious. And my boyfriend and I keep saying we want to go back for it. Manteca is another one. It's in Shoreditch. Really, really lovely pasta. Kind of small plates again, so you can try and share a few different things if you're with a few different other people. Campania around the corner from Columbia Road. Delicious pasta. Really hard to get a reservation, I think but I went with the girls last year and it was lovely pasta and lovely tiramisu. There's a theme with this whole section. And then there's a few on my list that I really wanna to go to. Darling's pasta, supposed to be really good. Tom's pasta is like a super casual place, but they apparently do really good lasagna and tiramisu. And then Luca has a Michelin star, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it's supposed to be lovely. Really hard to get a reservation anytime I've looked. It's just like never had anything free around the time that I've wanted to go. And then Dalla in Hackney. I walk past it every day on my walk to work. It's in Homerton, it's an Italian, and they look like they also have lovely tiramisu. I feel like the Asian section of my list isn't like that extensive, but Baba Sang in Dalston is the best Korean food I've ever, ever had. The Korean fried chicken is so like tender and succulent and just like delicious. Um, the kimchi was really nice. The pork bulgogi was really nice. I've been twice and I just think the quality of food there is incredible. Then there's Kiln in Soho. It's a Thai restaurant. Solly and I went for Valentine's Day this year and it was absolutely delicious. Jinju in Soho. Solly and I actually went years ago four, five years ago. The food I remember just being really, really good, but also the vibes were quite fun. I feel like it'd be a fun place to go for dinner and then drinks and like get a little bit lit. Jeanne Impression, you've probably seen it on TikTok. It's a Chinese joint and you can't book, but they've only got like a few things on the menu and the service is really quick. So it's like a pretty quick like rotation of customers. So if there's a queue, just get a beer and you'll be fine. It'll be over in no time. Norma's is a Malaysian spot in West London that I've been meaning to try. I just haven't yet, but I think because it's in West that I've just like never had a time where I've been like, oh, should we just go there? Um, but it is somewhere that I really want to try. Pubs, if it's sunny and you want to sit and have some pints outside with your friends, Kissel Park Tavern, Bank of Friendship, Spursdo Arms, which I know is a bit stereotypical East London, but does what it says on the tin. Canonbury Tavern's also a really good one. Duke of Wellington's good for like an after work pint on the park. So if you want like a fun boozy night out, maybe you want to go for a dance or just like keep the party going after going to the pub, I would recommend Dalston Jazz Bar. Around like half 10, 11, it turns into a nightclub. Old Queen's Head is a pub in North. It's got a club upstairs and they play like old school R&B bangers and like Drake and like that kind of vibe. It's really fun. Moth Club, I've not actually been, but I've heard really good things. Ridley Road in Dalston, that's like a classic. I mean, the amount of times that we end up just kind of going there just because you can't really go wrong. Um, The Haggerston, I feel like sometimes it's been a bit hit or miss. It's a pub, but it kind of turns into more clubby scene. You can actually hire the upstairs room as well for like private parties. I want to go to Jumbie. Me and Vivian and Gloria were saying we should really do like a girls night out there you can go and have caribbean food and then it kind of turns into more of like a dancey scene it's in peckham so not east london well east london but south brilliant corners is also really good fun it's a japanese restaurant but they kind of turn it into a club around like 
10, 11. Um, so I would recommend going there for food and then kind of just staying for when it turns into like fun, dancey vibes. Okay, so after your big night out, you're hungover, you wanna go for a Sunday roast. I actually used to not rate going for a roast because I would always just be like, they're better at home until I had a few good ones in London. So the Albion in Highbury and Islington, they've got cute little like outside courtyard area. I wish we were sat outside there when we went, but the roast was really good. Lady Mildmay on Newington Green, that's a delicious roast. The Marksman's a really, really, really good roast. Slightly more on the more expensive side, but I would say worth it. And then top of them all is Draper's Arms. It is the best roast I've had in London. It's so, so good. I went recently and I cannot stop singing its praises. I've got two other places that I haven't mentioned, but they're like on my list. It's Bistro Freddy. I've actually booked it for mine and Solly's six year anniversary. And then Bambi in Hackney. I'm actually, after this, I'm gonna book Bambi in Hackney for me and the girls, cause I really wanna go. And Leo's on Chatsworth Road. I think that looks really good. The last category in this video is if you're looking for inspo for what to do for your birthday and it's kind of just things that I've done for my birthday. So I mentioned Rita's in Soho before. They've got like a private backyard dining area and you can book that out and I think its capacity is maybe 12 people and it's usually a set menu and I think it's around 60 quid a head, um, not including alcohol. So it is a bit more on the pricey side, but I would say it's really well worth it. The food is delicious. The vibes are amazing. Like it's just such a lovely atmosphere and a great place to have a birthday especially if you're a summer baby like me. El Pastor, there is a few of them in London. I think I booked the one around Soho. They do like a private room if there's a big group of you and then they just do good tacos and margaritas and they brought out tequila shots that were like so, so big. And then we went from there to Below Stone's Nest, which is just like a good night out in London, like a pretty guaranteed good vibe in Central. Pours of Wine, I mentioned my friend Eleanor does that every year, but if you book that around like an hour leading up to sunset and then for sunset, gorgeous, especially the private room. Dalston Jazz Bar, I mentioned that before is a good night out, but also they do seafood. So we went for Solly's brother's birthday and there was like a big table of us. There was like 14 of us. They're very accommodating. I feel like it'd be really fun to just like book out the whole restaurant because it's not very big. They just keep bringing out these fish dishes and you just pay what you feel. So I think we paid 40 for the food and then just paid for our booze, whatever we drank. You kind of pay for the booze at the time as you order. And then they take away the tables and the chairs and they turn it into a nightclub and it's really, really fun. And then there's a roller disco in North London and it looks really fun. And I feel like if I don't do it for my birthday this year, I'll do it for my birthday at some point. I've just had really good things. Okay, I feel like I've been talking for so long now that I have like actual cotton mouth. So I'm gonna finish this video. If you have any other suggestions or places that I should add to my list, please let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video.